man, we made it. We got, <laughs> we got two more after this. <laughs> you know, before we reach the season with it. Um, but, you know, today's episode, we're going to be uh, covering nutrition. Uh, so far, we've covered anatomy. We've covered uh, movement. We've covered regeneration. And now we're covering nutrition. Uh, and uh, in this nutrition part, we're going to cover... we talked about nutrition before, right? We sprinkled some in there when we talked about anatomy, like when digestive system. Okay. You know? We spoke mm. about it back then, like when you said, like, what's the portion size? Okay. Uh, but now we, we actually get a chance to, like, dive in for sure. Um, and we're talking about macronutrients. All right? So we got carbs, proteins, and fats. Mm. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right into this uh, episode. So when we look at carbs... Mm-hmm. We're looking at uh, fiber and starch. Uh, I guess we should share a, a source that we eat from of each, mm -hmm. one or two. So go ahead. You can share one or two uh, fiber sources that you have. I, I mean, I just eat fruit. Fruit. Okay. Fruit, fruit is a good source of fiber. Source absolutely. of sugar and carbohydrate and um, uh, fiber. The, like if you eat the skin, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so you go ahead. <laughs> you need to talk more about that. I'll, I'll hit you with my source of fiber. Yeah, so I mean, that's probably my main source. Uh, that and yeah, that's probably my main source. Oh, and like dates. Dates is probably another of my main source of fiber because, like, again, the problem with those is when you start to remove the fiber from the sugar. Is when it becomes a problem. Problem, right? You know, but if you're eating them whole, with other nutrients again that are in there, or other chemical reactions that are in there that we don't even realize are happening yet. That have to break down here. Yeah, that have to. Yeah, hundred percent. So if you try to like juice something, you're just drinking all sugar and water. And yeah, sugar, sugar and water. water. Yeah. And you sound like my man from Men in Black again. Yeah, sugar water. <laughs> Sugar, sugar, <laughs> <Sure>, or... <laughs> this whole thing. Something. Yeah, story. but uh, yeah, that, those, those are my main sources of uh, fiber. Like, I don't take any fiber supplements. Uh, I don't do any type of cleanse that is supposed to, you know, get your colon good. Like, I don't do none of that. Fiber stuff. helps with that colon. You know, fiber push things yeah. down. If you just eat like you're supposed to eat on the regular, and again, maybe you may need something because you've been eating so bad for a while, and you need something to really scrape that stuff out i'm not against it but after you do something like that then you all you have to do is just eat you know regular um foods with fibers in them and this is a you know obviously most people think this is gross when we talk about poop yeah but your fiber helps the poop yeah you know what i'm saying so <laughs> again we're talking on that digestive system i, was, I thought i was gonna hit stutter butter by <laughs> on the digestive butter but <laughs> 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 Digestive system stuff, I think, is always important to talk about fiber and your sources. And for mine, I have oatmeal, okay. right? And I also put the oatmeal into my protein shakes as well. You know, so I'm always catching that fiber in the morning, whether I'm doing oatmeal by itself with peanut butter yeah. or oatmeal inside the protein shake. How many, how many grams of protein are you eating with your... Uh... Oh, we'll wait till we get well, to the, that. The, the, exactly, that's the protein yeah, yeah, yeah. conversation. We'll wait till we get to the protein conversation. Right, so I'm just, just remember to bring that back. I hope so. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that's my fiber source oatmeal, and again, like you, like yours, uh, you said fruits and veggies. Yeah, fruits, veg, fruits and veggies for me. I mean, you can get them from things like I just had a sweet potato. Mm -hmm. That's another. But uh, that's gonna go into starch. Yeah, but you know, it's almost like looking at the human body, right? Mm -hmm. If you just focus on the hand you'll miss what it's connected to and how other things play a role on the hand. Sure. So it's like, yeah, you know, we break them down and we know what they are, but they work synergistically. Absolutely. You know, so, but yeah, it's it's definitely into the starchy realm more than, uh, yeah, yeah. it has a lot of fiber in that sweet potato. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fiber. There's a discussion for that. For yeah, sure. yeah. Um, kind of like segued into a starch for, you know, for yeah. sure, like fiber, starch, Areas. And then you mentioned something about the glycemic index. <laughs> and, you know, sweet potato yeah. falls on that low. Uh -huh. Right? And then the regular potato kind of drifts off to, like, that mid-range. Yeah, so you can educate me some more on this because I've heard this a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So you got the low glycemic. Now, what's the difference between a low glycemic and high glycemic starch? So when they're talking the gly, is I'm seeing sugar. Yeah. So how much sugar is going to be? 
impact impacted into that uh food so when you said sweet potato yeah we consider soup as natural sweets you know like yes. how it tastes so uh anything that has like a lower amount of sugar will be on a low glycemic anything that's high in sugar like a banana mm -hmm. that's higher on the glycemic index so it breaks down slower in the body yeah as opposed to like a french fry you know what i'm saying that could break down really quick and you'd be hungry again super it makes sense and then um let's say you cook sweet potato or you bake sweet potato again that's another way of helping your digestive system break it down as opposed to like with the oils mm. so now if it's olive oil that's a much better oil to digest with than the canola oil or whatever they put in the french fry mm. you know or like they, they bake it in that yeah. grease and they never change that, that. concoction of grease <laughs> <laughs> they ain't never change that it's like ooh. Yeah. but it's like um you know that's what you find the glycemic index and when we look at starches right uh another starch most people are truly affected by is rice mm. <laughs> i just had some of that <laughs> some basmati rice you know what though but that rice see breaks down a lot slower than white rice like mm. I, I think i broke that down on, like a few episodes ago that white rice will just drop into your body and like like chlorine <laughs> Whereas like the brown rice or the black rice or any wild rice, those break down like alka seltzer, so you'll see it fizzle out mm. slower. Right? But the chlorine immediately hits the water. You like when you see what happens. Like acid, yeah. <laughs> and it and it blends in with the water. So uh that's the difference between the two rices. Mm. One breaks down slower, one just goes right into the bloodstream. And then I remember also mentioned how pretty much they all the same except for the wild rice, but <laughs> exactly. You got yeah. apparently it probably breaks down slower, you know. I don't know. I don't, shit, I don't know. I know I feel good after I eat that. It's for me. It's like it's the it's the basmati rice, mm -hmm. or I don't eat the I don't eat the brown or the white rice. My, cool. my Nigerian friends are saying the jollof rice too. What jollof about, rice is good. You don't know about jollof rice? Nah. They I just, they got, don't be mad at him. Let him be. I just know the basmati, bro. Like, oh, God, it's the bomb. It's the bomb. Now, do they eat a lot of oxtails? I do. Okay, so the crazy thing about oxtails, and I heard Cat Williams say this, and it makes so much sense. He was like, it hasn't been an ox <laughs> since the in <laughs> When's the last time you seen an ox? That's fair. Again, I don't know. I'm, I didn't look it up since I heard that, but I'm like, yeah. I've never seen an ox in person, right? Yeah, or I've never even seen, like, any of the, like, ox farms. Like, they have the, you know, the dairy farms. So never tell they give me pigs. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they give you, like, bull tail or something like that. I don't know. Interesting. I'll, yeah. I'll look into I'll it. look into that. Like. But you know what? Um, that ox tail breaks off into protein and fat. Because there's yeah. fat around the protein. Mm -hmm. So that's, we get into that. You know, we dive into that section of it. But um, any more starches that you eat outside of rice? Uh, Glad you asked this question. Mm -hmm. Would you consider garbanzo beans a starch? Yeah. Would you consider but, lentils? But garbanzo, like beans, essentially drift off into protein. Okay, so it can be both. It can be a hybrid, right? So that's where I get my sources from then. Okay. Bonzo beans, lentils. Lentils is a, a, a for sure protein. Kamut, spelt, teff, amaranth. Uh, these are all the forms of uh, grains that I eat. Absolutely. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, quinoa, red quinoa. Yeah, he just gave you everything that's healthy uh, for sure. <laughs> so those are all the ones that I eat, you know. You everyday, people, everyday people, everyday uh, people, we eat bread. And rice, you know what I'm saying? But what he just mentioned right now, please put go make a list of that. <laughs> That's actually stuff to consume. To re uh, you never like just change your plate, but you can adjust it, right? Yeah, you can try things out too, yeah. though, right? Like I make bread out of spelt or bread out of kamut. You know, these are the things I make the bread myself. I make tor tortillas out of spelt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, really I make my own. Hands on yeah, scale, bro. because. When you when I make my own forms of carbohydrate, it's just completely different. Like if I if you look at the ingredient list on a, a loaf of bread, it's insane. How many things go in there? And then if you make it yourself, you got like four or five ingredients, if that. You got whatever flour you used, water, salt, 
Egg. I don't even use egg. Oh, wow. But that's three ingredients right there so far that I use. And that's really only the thing I use. And like uh, avocado oil to like, you know, if I'm making a tortilla. Right. To kind of, you know, fry it up. That's four ingredients. One of them is water. <laughs> so really three ingredients. Really? You know, those <laughs> of us who don't live like this, let's listen up. Take notes for but sure. But it's so easy to make Dude, it though. Right. It don't take nothing but 30 seconds once you get it down. Once you get it down, you know how much water to put in there, how much flour to put in there. So I guess you should tell them like when you first got started with it. So when I first got started, I just looked up, you know, I just obviously it took me a little bit more time because I had to measure and pour. You know, I poured the water in there, had to measure the amount of flour to use, and then I measured the amount of, but uh, you know, maybe sea salt to use, and then um, again water, and I put a little olive oil inside the uh, thing too, so that the mixture, know, the mixture. But once you get it down to what the consistency looks like, mm-hmm. you can just measure it up yourself. And if you put a little bit too much of something in there, you can you know what else to add, and Try then to doctor it up. Yeah, now thirty seconds. You done made bread, and all you got to do is fry it up, which takes maybe two, three minutes. Five minute total. I salute you, bro. <laughs> You're a different it's, American. What I'm saying is... Most Americans our age just like, don't even think like that. Well, it seems like a lot. The only thing that takes the longest is if you want to make your own bread. Because you got to put it into... The, I got my own bread maker. It's like less than an hour, I'm sure, right? It's, it's less... It's, yeah, the machine does all the work. <laughs> you, you have a machine that does Yeah, that? you just... You know what I'm saying? Because if you have an oven, you can do it in the oven. But I don't have an oven, so I just do the... I got to made a little bread maker. Got a little bread maker. So you just you uh, put so all the ingredients so, so, so in. Someone thought you got easy baked oven or something. Oh man, it's good. It comes out easy baked oven makes some good bread. <laughs> <laughs> but you put the ingredients in, it whips it up, kneads the dough for you, and it just bakes it for you. And this is bread or tortilla you make from that. No, see so the tortilla I make on my own. I make okay. it on a little stove top. And I, you know, I flatten it out myself. Use a flat iron or just my hand, really. <laughs> this is yeah, you can, you, you can use the rolling pin or you can use your hand. I like to use my hand. Because it gives it a little bit of a, a thicker uh, tortilla. Okay. So I like that, and I boom it, and boom it, and then eat it with soup, eat it with whatever. You know, uh, I appreciate you, bro. You are, <laughs> you are hands-on with your meal, man. Respect. I mean, that's where the love comes from. When you... Love what you eat. Yeah, but not only that, the time you put into it. The less time you put into the food, the less alive it is, in a sense. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Or unless you probably enjoy, like, I mean, you can enjoy your own. Food yeah, in a but the less way. your body is going to enjoy it, the mm-hmm. less your body will enjoy it. I you see know, that. the less nutrients as well too. Even these, these little quick, these little quick like gel packs or some shit like that. Like, yeah, <laughs> going on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gel packs. What are you talking? Well, they got like like <laughs> snack bars and shit. Like that stuff is that you can just quickly grab and eat. Like the uh, Nature's Valley. Like thing. Nature's Valley, all that garbage. Okay. You know what I'm saying? You made a granola? It's garbage, bro. Okay. Garbage. You make your own granola bar? I could. All right, we will. I can win. We're back. Uh, in this segment, we're going to talk about protein. I think my man is going to take over plant protein. I'm going to talk about animal protein. So I have three sources. You're up to two sources if you got any plants. So I'll start Go with, ahead. Yeah, with animal. Yeah. So with the animal proteins that I consume, it's chicken, ground turkey, and, oh, I can't even say fish because that's the next one. So ground turkey, chicken, and beef. Wait, fish is, what? Fish will be fat. You know protein in fish? I mean, it sure is, but it's like, you know, it tends to be on the uh, fat side because of the omegas. Man, you don't knock it off, man. (laughs) You don't knock that off. Look it up, man. man. It don't matter what they say. (laughs) <laughs> it's, not, it's a protein, man. It's not a fat. Yeah, it got fat in it. Yeah. But you can call a, 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 a fatty piece of steak fat then. That too. That's what I'm saying though. The, 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 the fatty many, part of the steak, not but, the steak itself. The yeah, steak but, will be protein. But there's fat. So hold up. Because like if you if you put uh fat on a pan, yeah. it's gonna boil down into like a oil, like a substance, like an oily substance. Uh-huh. But if you have protein on a pan, you're gonna just fry it. So the fish has more of the fats inside of the meat, mm-hmm. almost like uh, uh, it's like considered like brain tissue. Fat. That's what I'm saying. It's almost like the myofascial tissue, but it's just fat instead of myofascial tissue, which mm-hmm. myofascial tissue is fat. It's collagen. Yeah, same difference, right? Mm-hmm. So, like but it's because you can just easier, more easily separate the fat from a, like a sirloin of beef or something or whatever. I don't know what 
more fat comes on um, peak the cuts of beef. Well, they're like a bison, like that's yeah. But it, but it, it, but their fat is more found it, like on the edges, like when you find a good cut, right? You know what I'm talking like, about? Yeah, for like when beef. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, I guess I'm picturing like a T-bone steak, mm -hmm. and then around the T-bone you can like see gristle. the gristle and the fat. Mm -hmm. But in a like a piece of salmon, when you cook it, you can see the fat coming out of the meat in a sense. Versus around the edge. So my guess is it's probably considered more to be fat because it's harder to separate the fat from the meat. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you, you, like you're looking at 55 fat, 45 protein. Mm -hmm. Whereas like an avocado for sure, that's all fat. Yeah, it's all fat. It's actually yeah. a fruit too, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least that's what they categorize that's it as. Now, it's just yeah. food. <laughs> Food. Yeah. But um, as far as what the proteins go. <laughs> I'm sorry, we went on that tangent. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> I, love, I love his tangents, though, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, chicken I consume. I consume ground turkey and I consume beef. Uh, obviously, I, I love burgers. Uh, ground turkey, I, I, I do that for my pastas. Mm. You know, um, I, I feel it's like a healthier pasta than what we yeah. grew up on. Did I tell you about the ground meat? Mm hmm. Was it ground bison? Or no, no, just any ground meat. No. What's, what's the, the filler that they use in it? Yeah, I can't say it on camera because you, now I can get in trouble. But I will tell you, if I didn't tell you already, I'd tell you off camera. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken source, like I normally uh, cook my chicken in olive oil. Um, rarely you, I, I bake my chicken. Mm. Um, but, you know, I, I love how uh, different seasonings I can put on the chicken. So <laughs> I'm very black about it. I get it. I, I can see already, like, yo, Rick, you spend a lot of time on chicken. Well, you, well, you know, it, it, <laughs> you know, I'm about to go on another tangent right now, right? Mm -hmm. This tangent is on soul food. And then we went on this tangent before, I believe. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it was on camera or not. This was hot mic session, yeah. But now you're free to go. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but this was one where everybody always think that soul food is black people food. And it's not. Okay. Because... Soul food is Southern white folk food. Slaves had to cook it for them. And then slaves got the leftovers of that food. Right. So imagine you cooking certain dishes for years and years in your life and you only get the leftovers. But now when you become quote unquote free, mm -hmm. you're like, dang, this is all I know how to cook. I'm gonna just keep eating this. You know what I'm saying? My bad. You good. You need that alarm. <laughs> that's you, the alarm you need to, it, yeah. That's the alarm to eat. But again, that's how... Here you go. You got to need an alarm to eat, bro. Like, who does that? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, not hey. random, for sure. <laughs> Yo, but like, we, we had this conversation last time. Yeah. You look at him, he doesn't look like he missed a meal. Yeah. I had to remind myself to eat. Otherwise, I just keep on moving, after, keep on hustling, keep on going. After I'm finished eating, I'm thinking about eating. <laughs> Damn, I'm going to eat again. That's good. I'm gonna say that for later. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna eat that in about twenty minutes. You know what I'm saying? But See, it's why like you probably take on a, a bear animal spirit. Probably. And I'm a wolf animal spirit. You know what I'm saying? I can eat for so much, and I can go for a few weeks without eating. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's because food is scarce. Now, if food was easily a, a, attained well, like this, I'd be a slow ass wolf. Yo, we'd be fat. They'd be fat wolves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm not trying to be slow. Every day on the savanna, a lion wakes up, knowing it's got a outrun the slowest uh, gazelle and every day a gazelle wakes up knowing it's got to outrun the fastest lion you know what I'm saying that's a good but, great. but that's the balance of nature mm -hmm. and we have broken that balance of nature as humans I'm sure we have. that's how we're able to have all these extra ailments all these extra you know uh, things that happen to us because we've broken the natural Order of things. Order, yeah, the natural order of things. Like, if you think about how things take time in nature, they take time. Which is a process. Yes. Which impatience builds in us now. And it, 100%. So. Next uh, piece we're going to be mentioning is uh, plant protein. Okay. Um, I, I mentioned that lentils mm -hmm. have some protein in it. Lentils, lentils do. Um, the quinoa does. Uh, all the all those same sources that I mentioned for carbohydrates, mm -hmm. all have some sort of protein in them as well too. Especially, like the kamut. Actually, the kamut is actually a richer source of protein than a, a quinoa would be. Right. Um, oh. Or the spelt as well too. Both of those are very rich. And I remember uh, reading or 
put in like a not a meal plan but like some diagram for a, a vegan or a mm -hmm. vegetarian uh, how they can make a complete protein it's like six different sources to, to create yeah. a complete protein so I, I can see how all those things you mentioned can yeah. combine like be beans and rice right that's probably the most popular one yeah. beans and rice uh, you can pretty much use any form of bean and then any form of rice even if you don't like it you know what I'm saying like if it's like a a yeah. bad form the, like, yeah the best for me and I always say for me is wild rice with like quinoa or wild rice with like garbanzo beans you know wild rice and something else one of those sources is like the best like kamut actually kamut is a really rich grain of protein you find this in whole foods trader joe's nah. where the only place you can get it from, I saw, was I get it from this little grocery store. Um, like a mom and pop spot. Like a mom and pop spot. Or you can order it on Amazon. But like from like what ethnicity is mom and pop? Uh, I don't know what they are. Hmm. Yeah, they're closed on Sunday. That's all I know. <laughs> but the, the kamu looks like larger granules of rice. Like they're much bigger. Okay. And it's almost like a rice and... Again, it's, it's, it's on its own, but it's like when you hydrate them and you like, you make them like you boil them and stuff and you make them just like rice and they are, they are really good. You can put like honey on them. You can make them almost like a, you would an oatmeal too. You know, it works just like the same characteristics of quinoa. Okay. They have like a nutty flavor to them versus like a rice, which is pretty bland. Now wild rice has more flavor to it though. Wild rice has some flavor, uh, but the kamut, yes. It's like you said, more like a nut, like an almond, like a like an like almondy flavor to it. Like it's really, you know, it's a it's a it's a hint of it, but it's like it's good, and okay. you can mix that with. Yeah, I mixed it with so much stuff, man. I mixed it in like salads, uh, that I made for myself. I uh, mixed it in, in like a, like a cucumber salad mm -hmm. where it's no no uh, no. Uh, that stuff called no lettuce but it's just like <laughs> the stuff called but that stuff called but there's no <laughs> lettuce it's just like you know red onions tomato uh cucumber and then a kamu with a little bit of sea salt on there olive oil lime or key lime that's it that's a whole that's a it's a good meal right there so you're making it palatable for them yo it's super simple yeah okay and like, you, I'm saying palatable, like, you know, like, it's something that you, like, I look forward to eating. It. Yeah. Okay. Like, it's really good. Like, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, y'all heard him say it, right? <laughs> yeah, like, the only thing that takes the most time is just making the quinoa. I mean, the uh, kamu. Oh, okay. That's it, because, you know, it cooks just like rice. Less than an hour, less yeah, than 30 minutes. Yeah, like 20, 25 minutes. 25 minutes, right. But, you know, as that's cooking, you just cutting up them veggies. Put some cilantro in there, too. Uh, in this segment here, we're gonna uh, finish off with uh, fats, All right? So uh, with fats, I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on this one. It is uh, either saturated or unsaturated fats. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we see something that's saturated, that means it's like, look at olive oil. That'd be an example of saturated. Then when you see unsaturated, you can see like mixed nuts, like almonds, cashews. So uh, let's go ahead and dive into that. You ever seen a raw cashew before? You know, you actually mentioned this. Yeah. You, you asked me, like, it's probably the second episode. Yeah. They're the very cashew, they're soft. They're soft. And then they get hard out, you know. And then they get hard because they roast them. But they're really they're natural when they come out of the little pod. They're really soft. It's almost like a raw, you ever seen, yeah, I know you've seen a raw walnut before, right? Mm -hmm. They come in, like, those green, um, almost like pod-looking things, and you crack them open. You mean a no, it's a walnut. Oh, they're green? Yeah, so they like they come out so the walnuts come in a coating. So yes, you see the thing that you can break. See, like the, yeah. yeah, but there's another coating that comes on the outside of that. Yeah, so you uh it almost looks like a little apple, but it's very small. Okay. I can't I don't even know what the head nuts. But it's very it's a little <laughs> spherical object, right? And then you open that, it's really soft though. So you open that up and then you have that hard shell. And then you crack that shell, and then you have the soft walnut inside. So there's like three layers in order to get to the walnut. I must be thinking of a pecan. Then. Uh, I don't know. What you walnut, thinking? right? Yeah. Walnut nuts. Yeah, I've had them. Well, I have them. I had. I've had them in their rawest form before. Wow. And it's like you buy them, and it comes in like this. It's probably like this big. You know what I'm saying? You 
break that little part off and it has the shell on it. Cause like, it has like a seal like lips, right? Like like all around it is like a seal, so when yeah. we crack it. Maybe. Mm. <laughs> right, but, yeah, that, but those goes in the unsaturated fat. Yeah. So let's, let's Cause they're change. solids. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So uh, you said walnuts, cashews, almonds would fall into that. Mm -hmm. um, Brazilian nuts. Oh yeah, that's a really good one. Would you put would you put pistachios in there? Yeah, I throw pistachios in there. Yeah. Uh, so we got peanuts. Peanuts. Another yeah. one. Yeah. So that's a good amount for y'all, right? Pine there. nuts. You still <laughs> throw sunflower seeds. There you go. Yeah. You got another one? Uh, <laughs> pecans. He's really dropping on you. Right now. <laughs> Macadamia nuts. <laughs> What's up? Give me here. Let's go. You next? What's up? Uh, you know what? What would you consider chia seeds? That's a that's a straight fat, ain't it? I'm gonna give that uh yeah to saturate, saturated uh, un okay. unsaturated. It's okay. unsaturated. So yeah, you said um, you said which pine nut? Yeah. No, no, I said chia seeds. Chia seeds. Yeah. Uh, so flax seeds, all of them. Like oh, let me let me. I know I can think of one more. Uh, I, wow, we already got Brazil nuts. You said macadamia. Mm -hmm. We got. I know there's one that's hard to find. Come on, B. Uh, oh, 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 uh, uh. Dang it. This is a, this is a uh, this is one that I had. I can't remember the name of it though. Yeah. I'm hitting it with the music too. On, on, on <laughs> do, 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 what is the name of this joint? <laughs> it's a really good one, man. It's called like a baraka seed or something like that. A baraka seed. Like a baraka or something like that. Yeah, it's one of those like ancient joints that's been around for a while that we just really adopted here in the U.S. You know, through you know shipment technologies and so on and so forth. I see you going with that. All right. Yeah. So that was one of those ones. It was yeah. It's, I mean, it almost it's almost like imagine a, a Brazilian nut, but a little with thinner and with like a shell on it, like a shell like a. Um, a shell like a no, no, not even like a pistachio. You ever seen those little thin shells that come on a peanut sometimes? Mm -hmm. Like that. So it's a mixture between like a Brazil nut, and but it's got that like shell on it, a very light shell, like a peanut. Like that crack ice. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Well, look into that. I can't um, but yeah, we gave you guys a lot of sources for yeah. fa uh, unsaturated fats. So uh, saturated, I mentioned olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a few I consume. There's a lot, mm -hmm. but I, I, olive oil is one of them. Mm -hmm. That's what I consume with more of a raw dishes, um, and avocado oil. Avocado oil, absolutely. Yeah. Pretty much those two, and maybe walnut oil too. Those three things are like the only ones I eat. Anything else I'm like with? Right. Yeah. And uh, we was kind of mentioning about the omega threes, omega six, and those comes from fish. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you start to see what omega threes inside vitamin C now, like uh, orange juice, mm. right? I don't the know. The source for orange, uh, omega threes, I've seen it in orange juice and, and in milk. They've been infusing that in there, which is like random. But again, omega threes is also in this uh, yeah. category of fats, right? So, yeah. yeah. Can we get that right? That's it, man. All right, cool. All right, so uh, we've covered uh, our macronutrients in this episode, covering carbs, proteins, and fats. And uh, we gave you, with carbohydrates, it's fiber and starch. With proteins, we gave you guys animal and plant. Mm. And then with uh, fats, we gave you unsaturated, saturated, and omegas. I didn't even mention like any soy-based proteins either, or pea proteins. Mm -hmm. It was just all you want, ancient you want, grains. You want to slide in there nah. right. The ancient grains. Let's yeah. see. Okay. That's, all I, that's all I mentioned was ancient grains, uh, ancient grain sources of protein, which are also great sources of carbohydrate as well, too. Awesome. So, uh, you know, that, that covers our episode there. Um, per usual, my man B. Dizzle's got something to leave y'all with. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll hit y'all with my first lesson in philosophy. First, first hood lesson in philosophy. It's a very popular one. If if was a fifth, we all be drunk. <laughs> 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 That's gold. <laughs> That's gold. <laughs>
big shout out to my man Adam Farino. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? Real random, son. Yeah. <laughs> I like how he rocks, son. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>